Secretary, welcome. Welcome to your leadership team, um, as well as welcome to the S veteran service organizations who are here this morning. We're here today to review the President's budget request for the Department of Veterans Affairs for fiscal year 2013, which includes a 4.5 percent increase in discretionary spending. I continue to believe that it's important that we provide adequate funding so that veterans of all generations will be able to receive the benefits and services they've earned and deserved without hassles or delays. But we also need to analyze the budget request to ensure that we spend the taxpayers' money wisely and, more importantly, that the funding will actually lead to better outcomes for veterans, their families, and their survivors. As we will discuss today, I have questions about whether um, that, that is the case for several areas of t today's budget hearing. To start with, the budget for mental health care includes an advanced appropriations request for fiscal year 014 of $6.4 billion. If adopted, it will represent a 4 percent increase over fiscal year 013 and a 66 percent increase over the fiscal year 08 level. But at hearings last year, the committee heard about the devastating, uh, devastating, uh, devastating struggles some veterans face when trying to get mental health treatment they need from the VA. In fact, VA's survey of its mental health providers last year was pretty clear on the problem. Seventy percent of survey respondents indicated they did not have enough mental health staff to meet the current demand for care. Forty-five percent indicated that lack of off-hours appointments is a barrier to care. And 51 percent said it took 30 days or more for a veteran to be seen for a specialty appointment such as post-traumatic stress order, disorder. Clearly, um, this is an instance where increased funding has not translated to better services for veterans. Today, I hope we'll get a better understanding of how VA plans to address these issues, how the requested funding would be used, and whether it may be time for VA to start looking outside the box to find solutions to the barriers veterans face in assessing this needed care. Another area of concern is the backlog of disability claims. Pretty common discussion we have in this committee. This budget requests a 41 percent increase in staff since 2008. But let's look at what's happened during that time. The number of claims pending at the end of the year has more than doubled. The average number of days to complete a claim has increased by 26 percent. The quality of decisions has trended down and is now below 84 percent. According to one performance measure, there's been a 16 percent decline in the number of claims completed annually by employees. Productivity. The appeals resolution time has increased from 645 days to 747 days, and VA decided hundreds of thousands less claims than it received. With statistics like these, it must be a priority to ensure the in initiatives VA is pursuing to get this situation under control will actually be effective so that veterans, their families, and their survivors receive timely, quality decisions when they seek benefits from the VA. Another area of the budget I'd like to briefly mention is the legislative proposal to spend $1 billion over five years on Veterans Jobs Corps programs. While I believe it's important that we help our veterans find meaningful work, I'm interested to learn how VA would suggest paying for this program and about how it would be structured. So I hope that VA will be able to provide us with more details about the, pro the proposed program today. Madam Chairman, the final item I want to highlight before I turn it back to you is the continued increase in staff at the VA central office and, quite honestly, at the VISN level. For example, since fiscal year 08, the staff of the VA central office has grown by quite cl close to 40 percent. And the Office of Human Resources and Administration has seen an 80 percent increase over the same period. Also, the staff at the VISN headquarters 
has increased by 52 percent between 08 and 011. I think we need to ask serious questions about whether this increase in staff staffing directly benefits our nation's veterans, whether these employees are essential to delivering services to the veterans who use the VA system, and whether any of the fund could be put to better use. The bottom line is that particularly in this time of record debt and deficits, we need to ensure that when we spend the limit, uh, limited money that we have, we do it wisely and that we make certain that the veterans are the ones that receive the benefits and services that have been earned and deserved. Uh, the trend lines are troubling to me. They should be troubling to this committee. And they should be troubling, quite frankly, to the VA. Uh, I'll focus much of my attention on those today and questions to the Secretary and to his leadership team. I thank the Chair. <coughs>